blog, and I'm here with Emily from Wilton. Hi, Emily. Hi. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. Are you sitting there at Wilton headquarter right now? I am. I am. We were going to do this in the test kitchen, maybe, but it's a little loud in there. So oh, really? There's a lot of baking happening today? <laughs> a lot of baking going on today. What, they couldn't all just put aside what they were doing so that we can... Uh, give everybody a tour of the kitchen. No. Okay. Well, maybe maybe next week. Maybe we'll try that again. <laughs> I know. We'll see. Well, it's good to see your face. And uh, this week we're talking about fondant. How do you feel about fondant, Emily? <laughs> I love fondant, <laughs> but like I said in the class, some people love fondant. Some people are buttercream people. Mm -hmm. So it really depends. The well, one thing I really wanted. Oh, go ahead. What were you saying? I was going to say, it's one. It's like one thing to look at it, it's another thing to eat it, and people have such passionate opinions about both the look and the flavor. It's a hot topic. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> right. Team fondant, team buttercream. I know. So what team, what team do you fall on? Are you team buttercream or team fondant? I think it really depends on my project. <laughs> if it's a cake that I want a lot of like interesting detail on, mm -hmm. Or something that I think that fondant, the really smooth cover of fondant will help mm -hmm. me with. I'm going to go fondant. But then sometimes nothing beats the taste of buttercream. So no. it just really depends on the cake. Well, I do love that in your cake that you show everybody how to do, you do have that nice layer of buttercream underneath the fondant. So, but, Absolutely. Does, but does that make you crazy as a, as a master baker? you know, watching somebody like peel the fondant off of their cake <laughs> and not eat it. No. Not at all. I actually no. made a cake over the weekend and some people ate it and some people didn't. But it's, you know, it's all about just presenting the beautiful cake to them and mm -hmm. once it's in their hands, they can, yes. they can enjoy it however they want. Yeah, there are two purposes of a cake, beauty and taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do whatever you want with it. Right, so, just eat it. Don't look at it and say it's too pretty to eat because that's what I hate. Just right. eat it. So had you ever worked with fondant before you started working at Wilton? I had. It hadn't, I haven't done it a lot before I started working at Wilton. Mm -hmm. But with all the testing that we do and product development mm -hmm. and just getting my hands on it, you get so comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy to think that there was a time that I was like, oh, no, fondant. But really? it's so easy, it's so user friendly. Yeah. Well, your first time, so you, because you were just a home baker before you started working at Wilton, right? I I went to culinary school. Oh, you did go to culinary so school. So I am. Okay. I did. Yeah, absolutely. So so did so you did you work with fondant in culinary food. school? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine those first experiments, you know, and I think about that too with the, with this class. It's kind of like, okay, we're going to try something really different here. But, you know, I guess if you've ever rolled out a pie crust or, um, you know, made a pizza dough or anything like that, it's that same kind of thrilling feeling of experimenting with a new product. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I said in class. I mean, once kind of the scariness or nerves of using fondant kind of go away. Mm -hmm. It opens you up to so many different things because you can mold with fondant, you can color fondant, you can cut it out in all the different shapes. Mm -hmm. So it's limitless. Yeah. Oh, totally. I know. And it's mesmerizing to watch. I was having some major like Play-Doh flashbacks, you know, watching you mix the colors and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I have a, oh, yeah. a question for you, actually. Is there any way you can add flavoring to fondant? Can you, I mean, could you add in, like, could you make it minty or chocolatey or anything like that? Mm-hmm, absolutely. <clears throat> we recommend using extracts. Mm -hmm. So you can use, like, a lemon extract, vanilla extract, and anything you have. Or we also have candy flavorings, which mm -hmm. are peppermint, cinnamon, beer mint, and those will add kind of the minty flavor to it. Mm -hmm. But if you tried to mix Absolutely. in something like, you know, a chocolate ganache or something, you know, like to actually mix it into it, what would happen? I mean, would the whole thing just kind of... It's a very good... <laughs> the structure, it's structured in a way 
that adding additional liquid is not going to work with the fondant. It's not mm -hmm. going to function the same. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to add flavoring, we suggest sticking to like extracts. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Don't well, don't just start do cramming some, things into it. <laughs> absolutely. And we do sell chocolate butter or chocolate fondant. So if you do need chocolate, you can buy chocolate fondant. Okay. This is good to know. Now, would you ever? Yeah. Would you ever make fondant from scratch? Is it even possible to, for the home baker Absolutely. to really? So what, what would go into that? Um, it's mainly powdered sugar mm -hmm. and some type of gum, a, thing called, a product called Gumtex. Mm -hmm. So Gumtex goes into water and you really just knead it in and some kind of flavoring, so vanilla or whatever you'd like to add. And mm -hmm. we have recipes online for traditional fondant. And then we have marshmallow fondant. <gasps> that sounds amazing. Good. Oh, it's good. It's super good. But it's a little sticky, so be warned. It's, yeah. you know, melted marshmallow. But all those recipes can be found on Wilson.com. And, and, and you sell the gum it's as really, well? We do, yeah. absolutely. Okay. okay. And it's really a labor of love. So if you really, really love, you know, the person you're making this cake for, mm -hmm. go all out. Make the fondant. But if not, there's nothing wrong with that. You can buy it, and it's equally as good. Well, what is the process like? Do you need to does it just sit in a mixer for a long time, or do you need to like really knead it like dough, or you know what would people be getting into if they decided to try try to do this themselves? <laughs> you do knead it like dough, and you actually incorporate the powdered sugar into the um, sorry the mixture. So uh -huh. it takes a long time to like in all of the ingredients. Okay. And you do have to let it sit. And you and you probably do not want to use an undermixed fondant. <laughs> no. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good to know. I know. I was thinking about that like if you just just watching you really need out that, you know, just mixing the colors and um, you know, how much muscle kind of needs to go into it or, you know, you need to take breaks in between. Oh, yeah. Fondant, or, fondant muscle. Yeah. <laughs> fondant muscle. <laughs> I know. Well, it feels like it's something that would be a kind of a day-long project, you know. Do you think it's a day-long project? Yes and no. Think... Yeah, or do you think I it's think a... it really depends on... What I mean, was... if you're doing a very elastic, mm -hmm. kind of like what we did here, it's going to take a while. Yeah. But if it's something just kind of like a little applique on a cupcake or mm -hmm. even a little flower, mm -hmm. that'll take, you know minutes, 10 minutes, so yeah. it really depends on your project. Yeah. Well, and do you, you know, because in our classes, um, you know, because we already have covered the baking of the cake, you know, we we know how to do that in the first class, so the cakes do kind of magically appear, um, you know, already baked. In That's the class of go on, yes. Yeah, and we, we do that because you don't want to watch the same thing over and over again, everybody. But, um, right. right. But but I wonder if there's a temptation for some people to just go use a pre-baked cake. You know, maybe you're more into decorating than you are into baking. Is there anywhere that, where you can just go buy a cake that's been made and not decorated? <laughs> yeah, you can. I mean, if you go to local bakeries, I know, mm -hmm. at least out by me, you can go to your local grocery store and just ask for uniced cupcakes mm -hmm. or anything like that. You just want to decorate. And they might look so at you a little really, funny, but that's okay. <laughs> well, not that funny. I know people that do it, so yeah, it's not that crazy. I know, because sometimes you just want to get to the fun part. You know, like by the time you're done with baking the cake, it's like you don't have any energy left. <laughs> right, which is why, I mean, realistically, you can bake your cake a day ahead or uh -huh. even a few days ahead and refrigerate it or freeze it, mm -hmm. and then you know, them just to ice and decorate and make them look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like the trick with fondant is really keeping it at that kind of perfect moisture level. Like you don't want it to dry out. Um, mm -hmm. And so, because you, you you cover them all in plastic, right? And do yes. they need, they need to be refrigerated or do they sit out? Nope. They can stay at room temperature. We suggest wrapping them in mm -hmm. plastic wrap mm -hmm. and sticking it in a container. And you can store it for up to two months at room temperature, mm -hmm. but also keep it out of the light because the colors will fade if it's 
Mm -hmm. Oh yes, because as um, I was just telling, I was just telling Emily before we, we went live. Um, we actually had one of the prop cakes from this class, and it was um, it was actually built on I think it was a styrofoam base, one of the samples for photography, mm -hmm. and we had it near a window for about a month. And by the end of the month, it had turned from turquoise to white, like all of the color had faded out of it. <laughs> so maybe keep it away mm -hmm. from direct sunlight. <laughs> If it's going to be right, and you're also not going to keep, you know, for a month. Yeah, nobody should so, keep as long as we did. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Well, now what happens if your K if you leave the fondant out and it does get a little bit too dry? Is there any way to kind of resuscitate it? Can you just add water? I would not add water. Don't add water. Okay. Um, you can. I to what I kind of do is like break it open and try mm -hmm. to get some of the center out mm -hmm. because the outside rust. Yeah. Um, and you could add a little bit of shortening in or just try to work it. And unfortunately, sometimes if you just leave it out, that's kind of you know it dries out and that's that. But mm -hmm. you can always try to break it and do some shortening in. Yeah. So do you recommend always having a little more on hand than you're going to need? Like just in case. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, have enough for your entire project mm -hmm. and color and prepare enough for your entire project. Mm -hmm. And then always have a little extra. Things happen. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you cut something wrong or it's the wrong color or so yeah, always having a little extra. Mm -hmm. It will save that you know, last minute trip and oh god, I have to run out and get more fun at oh my god. eight o'clock at night. Yeah. I can I can only imagine. <laughs> so now what Don't be prepared. I was actually just rewatching the class and I, and looking at how beautifully you trim off the bottom edge and it looks so like mesmerizing and magical. And <laughs> I was thinking what if you cut off a little bit too much? Is there any way you can I mean is it possible to patch fondant or stretch it to kind of make it fit a little bit better? Absolutely. So the great thing about fondant is it's so stretchy and elastic mm -hmm. that if you do trim it a little short, mm -hmm. you can take either your hand or that smoother I was using in class mm -hmm. and kind of press it down the cake and work it down so there's mm -hmm. not that gap. So would you or recommend... Worst, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You finish your thought. I was going to say, if worst comes to worst, you can put a border on the bottom and no one will know. Oh, that's a good idea. Just like pipe yeah. a little border or something. Yeah. Type of water or roll some fondant into little balls and put it all around the edge. Oh, know? yeah. Or even just a strip of fondant around the bottom. Exactly. Or like a ribbon. Oh, I love yes. it. <laughs> but could you, could you ever just like, I'm just wondering if you would ever lift it off of the cake, you know, once you've put the fondant down on the cake and it's mm -hmm. touching the buttercream and you realize, uh-oh, I don't have enough for, you know, I didn't, I didn't like roll it out far enough. Would you ever take it off of the cake and kind of wipe the buttercream off of it and take it back to the board? Or is it, is that really I not would recommended? Not. I would not. <laughs> no, which also goes back to why you should always have a little extra on hand. Uh -huh. But we do have that part that says if you're covering a six inch cake or an eight inch cake, mm -hmm. you know, you need to roll it so far. Like yeah. I say in class, that equation. Mm -hmm. So you'll always know how far to roll your fondant. Yeah, I feel like I'm your naughty student who just wants to cheat at every corner. <laughs> Stop being corner. At home at like eleven o'clock at night, just like I'm just gonna roll it out again, <laughs> <laughs> and then making another ball with it, just mixing the buttercream in. I could see all sorts of disasters. <laughs> You'd be like, no. Well, at some point, that's when you just want to decorate it. It looks beautiful. Right. Yeah, then refer back to week two and do a bunch of buttercream swirls on top. What? Absolutely. Uh, oh, there we are. Sorry, my screen just changed for a second. <laughs> I'm back now. I'm good. So do you, do you have any ideas? Uh oh, lost you. Yeah. 
Are we I back? I think I'm back. Can you see me now? Okay. I think I'm... Yes. It's always an adventure. <laughs> uh, it really is. Hi, everybody. So, do you have any words of wisdom for anybody who is struggling like I probably would be um, based on my questions I just keep asking you um, <laughs> when, it come, when it comes to working with fondant for the first time? Mm -hmm. any, any do's like or don'ts or things to avoid? Let's see, do's and don'ts. I'd say, you know, just work with the fondant, get comfortable with it, knead it out, mm -hmm. practice rolling it. You could always roll it and then mush it back together and knead it again and roll it. So just kind of get a feel for it. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I mean, just dive in, have fun, cover your cake and cut out little decals and have fun with it. The yeah. first fondant cake, I remember my first fondant cake, and it wasn't the most beautiful thing in the world, but it mm -hmm. tasted wonderful. Had a really good time making it, and then the next one was even better, and then the next one was even better. So right, it seems like the kind of thing where, as you're when you finish it, you're probably already thinking about what your next project would be. Absolutely. Like I love the idea. Like you guys use those um, circle cookie cutters, but mm -hmm. I mean that just opens up a whole new world of ideas for right. what you could do with cookie cutters and oh, what yeah. you could do with color. Yeah. I know. I'm thinking about it right now. And you could just keep stacking and coloring and changing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know. Well, um, do you have any kind of recommendations for how much time a person should really set aside if they, you know, really, if this is their first project and they're going to tackle a tiered cake, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you make it look so easy in the classes, of course, and it's just like magically within 45 minutes this beautiful cake appears. But how long, uh, yeah, exactly. how long does that really take? You know, if you're a little nervous and it's your first time, I'd say just give yourself, you know, the day or the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And again, it depends on the project. If you're doing the two-tiered, you're going to have to bake the cakes or buy the cakes, whatever you decide to do. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to them and cover them and stack. I mean, so give yourself a day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it'll be an extra bonus if you finish early and you can go to something else. So, yeah. it, again, it really depends on the project, though. Yeah. Time management is key, people. You don't want to be stressed out. Yes. Exactly. Time well, and management then, and preparation. And I'm just curious, you know, for my, for my own personal um, curiosity, do you think fondant is really like on the rise in the cake decorating world? Do you feel like you're seeing a lot more of it um, than you know, kind of your traditional buttercreams and other kinds of icing, mm -hmm. or um, is is fondant in its heyday right now? You know, we actually we did a um, kind of a trend report earlier in the year, and we've mm -hmm. actually been seeing buttercream come back and oh. really really of using buttercream, mm -hmm. but fondant is always going to be there. It's always going to be a staple in cake decorating mm -hmm. because you use specific things with buttercream that you can with fondant. Mm -hmm. So even though you know we're seeing a lot more buttercream come back, doesn't mean that fondant's going anywhere. Yeah, and it's kind of you know like fashion or anything else. It kind of it comes back and then it might cut off yeah. and then it comes back. So yeah. Well, what I love about fondant and what I love what you guys are doing with it is that, you know, when I was growing up, I always, when I saw fondant, it was like only ever on a wedding cake. You mm -hmm. know, you just didn't really see it. You didn't see it on a birthday cake or just, you know, for any occasion. And, yeah, and it was always white. I think I didn't even know you could color it. <laughs> yeah, and, you can. Yeah. I think and, traditionally because, oh, go ahead. you know, you normally and on wedding cakes. So, of course, you see a lot of white fondant, mm -hmm. but you can color fondant, like we talked about, you can flavor fondant, mm -hmm. or you can buy pre-colored fondant. We sell eight different colors or nine different colors, mm -hmm. which you can knead together, like I showed in class, and you can really make it any color, any flavor, any way you want it for right. your event. And it doesn't even have to be super formal. I think that's the other nope. perception is that it needs, it's like for an occasion with a capital O, but, you know, mm -hmm. it really can just be, you know, for a birthday party or for just, you know, 
I'm having people yeah, over for dinner and I wanted to bake a cake. Yeah, I made a fondant cake for my best friend last weekend and for his birthday and I made this big cake for him and it's, you know, it's just kind of, it's fun, it's easy to use and people are always like, oh my gosh, this must have taken you forever. But once you get really yeah. good at it, like, let them think that, but no. Yeah. <laughs> did you bake it at home or did you bake it in the Wilton Test Kitchen? <laughs> I did bake it in the Wilton Test Kitchen. I stayed late and I baked it in the Wilson Test Kitchen. Is that it's pretty convenient. For you? Is that yeah. easier for you to just kind of, you've got all the tools there, you know how it works. Exactly. And we also have eight ovens. So, you know, sometimes <laughs> you stay late and you put all the ovens on and you just yeah. get your project done. <laughs> I love I love your, your recreational baking after hours. You're an inspiration to well, all of us. And I bet thank people, you. <laughs> I bet people freaked out when they saw that cake. Were they so impressed? Oh, they went crazy. It was it was a pretty cool cake. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Oh, well, I want to see a picture. You should. I have an okay. idea, Emily. I think you should post it to Instagram and hashtag it. I want you to use our hashtag, Iced It Myself. And anybody I else who's listening, I Iced It Myself. And if anybody else who's listening wants to post pictures of their cakes, we would love to see them. And please hashtag them, Absolutely. Iced It Myself. And add a, add a creative book hashtag to you while you're at it, if you don't mind. Um, so. Okay. Yes, and follow us at Creative Bug and also at Wilton Cakes because we just, I mean, there's nothing better than seeing finished projects. So that's your homework. Yeah, I love seeing what everybody does. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to see what everyone does with the classes. I want to see, you know, the cupcakes and the cakes, and I, I want to see everyone trying it. I know. Well, they're out there. They're making stuff. So um, everybody needs to hashtag it. Check, check it on Instagram. And until then, next week we're going to be talking about royal icing mm -hmm. and your beautiful drop flowers. So, are you yeah. gonna are you gonna do something with royal icing this weekend so you can show us pictures? <laughs> Maybe I'll do something small. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just I wasn't planning on. Okay, just a special <laughs> request. Something to think about. Right. Okay. okay. Well, I think that's. That's all the time we have for now. But until then, always good to see you, Emily. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>